Hi, I'm Sabin Yaakov. This presentation is entitled the Electronics Parts Replacement, a Ceramic Capacitor Case. We are now witnessing a real shortage in electronic parts due to the COVID-19 pandemic. So there is a real problem finding a replacement for existing design. We have already the design, we have already the PCBs, now we need the parts and we can't find the original part, we need to have a replacement. There is another reason for replacement. In some cases, we find that the prices are lower for a replacement, so we'd like actually to replace it. Of course, I'm talking about the same footprint, same basic parameter. Now, why not replace? Because as it turns out, different manufacturer might have different material. Uh, the component might have a little bit different characteristics and very, very problematic is if there are some unspecified parameters that are not specified in the data sheet and you have two parts, then you don't know whether they are really equal because of these hidden parameters. And there's the question of workmanship, quality of packaging, heat dissipation might be different, and of course, aging. So let's have a look at the group of resistors, capacitor, and inductor. As it turns out, all these have the same component, that is capacitance, inductance, and resistor. The difference between these is the dose. That is, in the case of a resistor, we'd like to have a lot of resistance, very little inductance and capacitance. And in the case of capacitance, we don't want any inductance or as small as we can, and of course, resistance. So in the three cases of these components, we are looking at the resistance, we are looking at the capacitance and the inductance. And of course, there are heat issues, thermal issues, the heat conduction, and also the frequency range that we can use the component. Now, this presentation is concentrated at ceramic capacitor. So let me talk a little bit about capacitors. Now, here is a very simple lump model of a capacitor. We have here the capacitance, the ESR, this should be ESL, inductance, and this is the leakage resistance. Now, the parameters which are relevant here, of course, are, first of all, what is the technology? Is it an electrolytic? Is it ceramic or any or film capacitor? We need to know the capacitance. This is the prime parameter. Accuracy, ESR and inductance are very important and not always very well specified, the frequency of operation, maximum current, maximum temperature, and also temperature sensitivity of the capacitance, and power dissipation is also not always specified. All the red ones are points to look at very carefully. Now, going back to ceramic capacitor, we have the class one and class two, which are the primary groups of ceramic capacitor. Now, class one is a very good material or group of material, the C0G or NPO. These are the best capacitor, best ceramic capacitor, very stable, perhaps a little bit larger than the class two because the dielectric coefficient is smaller, but still they are small. Unfortunately, the range of this capacitor, which is manufactured today, is up to, say, 0.1. There are some manufacturers who have a 0.5 or even 1 microfarad, but these become quite expensive. So these are the best capacitor available, very stable, ESR low, but again, you cannot use them in all applications. And then you have to turn to the class 2, which is the X7R, X5R, and then there are many, many other materials. Normally, these are specified or qualified as temperature difference. That is, the temperature stability of this is different. This is correct. But as it turns out, they have also other parameters which are very different, like uh, dependence on the capacitance on the DC bias. So you cannot mix these unless you really very carefully look for the differences in the characteristic and see that uh, indeed the replacement will do the job that you need. 
And these are, of course, larger capacitors. Now, in a typical application of capacitor, we use them, say, for filtering. Here is like a buck converter. Uh, we have a capacitor in the output, the purpose of which is to smooth out the voltage to get a DC voltage. And for that, we like to have a large capacitance, and we don't want the ESR, and we don't want the ESL. These are actually disturbing the operation normally, and they are causing the ESR is causing dissipation, ESL is causing noise at the output because uh, then you have a high impedance at high frequency. So this is a real typical application. Now I have chosen now two capacitors. One is from TDK, and this is a 0603 package, one microfarad, 16 volts, plus minus 10%, and the material is X5R. Here is the data sheet or the basic data sheet. And then I've also chosen a similar capacitor, which could be a replacement, 0603, one microfarad, 16 volt, X5R, apparently exactly the same capacitor, okay? And here are the characteristics of the second capacitor, which is made by Murata. Now, in a typical application, we're going to have the capacitor, say, exposed to a DC voltage. So one of the first things you'd like to look at is how is the capacitance dependent on the DC bias. So I compare the two, and I see this is the Murata, this is the TDK. Both are 16 volt maximum voltage. I'm operating them, say, at 5 volt, as an example, here and here, and I find that, well, pretty good uh, match between these two. There is a drop of 20% and 20% in this case, and this is not surprising because we are talking about the same material, the same package, so you'd expect these to be about the same. Now I'm looking at the ESR. Okay, suppose I'm operating the converter at 200 kilohertz, and here's 200 kilohertz. This is the ESR for the TDK. I find it to be 10 milliohm. And now I'm looking at the Murata, and lo and behold, you see that at 200 kilohertz, it's uh, 40 milliohm. That's quite a bit of a difference. Okay, it's four times larger. This means that the dissipation will be larger. The uh, uh, perhaps the ripple will be affected. So this is quite a bit of a difference for two capacitors which are supposed to be exactly the same. So next, I'm comparing the current carrying capability as shown in the data sheet by the two vendors. This is again the TDK, this is the Murata, and they don't have the 200 kilohertz, so I'm look at the 500 kilohertz here and there is a 500 kilohertz here this is this blue and it turns out that this is also the blue and let's look at the 1m so it says here that 1m will increase the temperature by say about six degrees while here 1m will increase the temperature by about eight degrees now this is really inconsistent with the ESR because the ESR here is 10 milliohm, here it's 40 milliohm, you would expect the temperature rise to be much higher, actually it's supposed to be four times larger than this, not just by two degrees, so it should be four times. So the question is, what's the reason for that? Well, of course it could be that maybe this is an error and this is not the real number, well, maybe, or more likely, the test condition for the two cases is different. That is, the temperature rise depends on the thermal conduction around the unit, the test unit. How much area do you have, how much copper area you have for thermal dissipation, for thermal conduction. And possibly these two were measured under different conditions. Now, I have not bothered to actually look very carefully to see what are the conditions. Usually, you have really to work hard to find this information. So, 
So this is in fact an inconsistency that you must resolve in order to find out whether there a replacement is indeed a good replacement or maybe there is a problem here. And then let's have a look at the frequency response. This is now the impedance of the capacitor as a function of frequency. And we know that the impedance for a capacitor is going down like one over two pi fc and in a log log scale it's a straight line because it's one over so this is the impedance and here is the resonant between the esl and the capacitor or the capacitance and this resonant point in this particular case is about nine megahertz okay from this resonant point and knowing the capacitance you can actually calculate the inductance and the inductance therefore will be 1 over 2 pi f square c when f is the resonant frequency so now i'm comparing the two units and lo and behold there is a difference here we find it to be 9 megahertz and here it's 5.5. Uh, That's quite a big difference. In calculating the inductance, I find this to be 0.88 and here 0.3. Big, big difference. So there is a real big difference between these two capacitors in terms of the uh, frequency range. And if in the application you expect to have a large component of frequencies in the megahertz range, obviously this capacitor is much better. There's no question about that. And indeed there is a large difference between these two. So what is the conclusion? Well, parts can ob obviously be replaced, but at minimum, all the parameters need to be compared and validated very carefully. You can't assume that if the general parameters sort of look the same, that all other parameters will be okay also. Obviously, it is best to test the performance of the replacement in the actual PCB, but this is not always possible. So this brings me to the end of this uh, short presentation. I hope you find it of interest and perhaps it will be useful to you in the future. Thank you very much.